Doug, how do you, how do you explain a 30 plus point loss on your home floor? That's, that can be easy to process. Um, lack of energy from the jump. Uh, I feel like we, we didn't execute offensively as we should have. And defensively, <coughs> defensively, we fell asleep a lot, meaning like we got lack of days to go on. <coughs> Jumping to the ball and seeing our man <coughs> being the upside. James, or, you know, or, or he has, or he has pissed, or he resigned uh, to the fact of how things are going right now. How do you, how do you process it emotionally? Because this is not a good spot to be in. Yeah, well, we're, we're definitely not happy. I'll tell you that. Um, I think that all you can really do in in a situation like this, when you're down, is just keep working. Um, that's really it. I mean, we're not going to sit here and pout about it. We're going to take it like men and learn from it. Obviously, because of the injuries, the identity of the team has been probably a little bit tougher to find than it would have been. What does the identity of this team have to be going forward to be more competitive on nights like this against some of the best teams in the conference? Just compete. Uh, no matter who's out there on the floor, we have to go out and compete like nothing ever happened, like no one was ever injured. Exactly. You know, um, we don't. We don't really believe in excuses or shortcuts, so um, our competitive nature just has to get better. Yeah, I would say uh, that, that with our identity moving forward, but I don't know exactly what it's going to be, but it can't be what it was tonight. we got to have energy and be way more intense on the offensive and defensive end. How, how can this team uh, be competitive against Clemson and have a, have a win over a great team against Western Kentucky? A month ago, and now twice in Mac play, you guys have laid eggs. How does how does that happen? You know, just a month apart, but essentially the same rotation. It's ups and downs. It's the season. Just um, honestly, it's just me myself. I haven't been the leader I'm supposed to be, especially in the Mac games. Honestly, um, I feel like I haven't <clears throat> been as active on the guys in practice as I should be, and it, it affects our games. Um, so going forward, I have to step up as a leader and get a little bit more pressure on the guys in practice and less leaning in on how we defend the scout teams and how we defend the second team. Um, we just have to bring more to the table, honestly. Absolutely, and that it goes, for, it goes for myself as well. Not that you guys need any extra motivation for a conference game at home, but especially considering um, the way things have been going recently, you know, how, how surprised are you guys that, that uh, the energy wasn't there from the start? I feel like we had a, a decent week of practice this week. I honestly didn't think we would come out and perform the way we did, but I mean, from the start, the first media, we were. I think we we're up one point. Mm -hmm. We started. I thought we started pretty well. With pretty good energy, but after that, I don't, I don't know what happened. We get a little complacent when we yeah. go on a run, and the team, the defend, the defending team has <clears throat> doesn't have their adjustments set and ready for us, and so we get complacent with one thing, and we apparently go away from the hot hand all the time, and <laughs> and. Uh, just get a little bit satisfied on defense, and then the adjustments happen, and then we don't make adjustments to the adjustments, and then the result is a blowout. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah, on the offensive side of the ball, at times it seems like you guys play a little anxious. How can you find that groove that we have seen you in? What what does it mean to get in that? Is it is it getting everyone involved earlier, or or is it trying to get guys to get the ball into the shooter's <coughs> hands early? What is the best way for you guys to find the success that we've seen with this group? That's a tough question to answer because um, every single night it's not like we're trying to play bad. We're trying to do our thing and trying to play good. Um, we're trying to move the ball, set screens for one another, come off screens hard, cut hard, um, reverse the ball, get open looks. But I couldn't tell you. I mean, some nights, some nights it's there and you see it, and that's what we strive for every single night. But then other nights, like tonight, it was just terrible. So when you guys get put in a position where you guys miss a shot on offense and then on defense there's the easy dunk where they get behind you or something, is that just not recovering from offense as well? How, how do you explain some of those sequences? That's absolutely right. We don't recover. We, we 
we fall in love with our shot and then it misses and then we get depressed and then we don't want to play defense. Mm -hmm. So we just have to, <clears throat> we, don't, we don't need to press on how our shots go in or go out because at the end of the day, we still have to go on, on the other side of the floor and play defense every single trip. So yeah, it's just a hard Back to what you said back there. Um, when, whenever we, we get in a little slump and we aren't finding, finding our groove, one thing that we can do more, improve more, is to get the ball in the post. We play through Doug and Kev, and we didn't we didn't do that enough tonight. I don't well, and and that kind of has to follow up. I was going to ask because Doug, it felt like when you had a chance down low. I mean, you were six and nine with the ball in your hands. So if you want to take a positive from tonight, I mean, you did score all right, and then five blocks down in the low post. If if you can bring that type of energy, do you see that translating to the rest of these guys? Because a lot of those blocks came late in the game. Because you were playing angry. You were clearly angry. How can you find that type of energy throughout the game and, and put that on the floor for 40 minutes? That's just how I have to play for now on. You know, like I said I said to myself, going into the game, I have to get fired up. And <laughs> I listened to the right playlist, you know, ate the right food, and I felt good going into the game. So I had to find that, that fire, you know, that, that immediate fire that I had in the second half. You know, um, it doesn't have to take a blowout for me to step up and play the way I'm supposed to play, you know. So that's just me having to sit down and talk to myself again and get a little feel for myself. Yeah, you know? I think we all can, can learn from that too. This can go for either one of you guys. Um, and you, you guys are the one to make excuses, I understand that. But do you find that maybe some of the mistakes that are happening this year later on are because the guys from the past aren't here, so maybe Tony wasn't here like last year to help you learn from some stuff, or maybe Kenny wasn't there to hit a shot when you guys weren't shooting drive. Are you guys finding yourself in a situation where you don't know who to go to when you need points? We have a, we have a couple guys, you know. Yeah. Um, Mike Lasseter was three for eight. He's usually our our go-to guy. Um, Dardis, shoot, I'd say Doug's our go-to guy. For the paint. <laughs> um, Dardis was three for seven. He struggled a little bit. So our go-to, our two go-to guys, and. James was one for four, and he's usually a huge spark off the bench as well. So when our bucket getters, per se, struggle a little bit, you know, it is going to be hard to get a rhythm going. So we just have to get in the gym a little bit more and get knocked down the shots that we're supposed to make. Yeah, like you said, we're not wanting to make excuses, but um, we face adversity, and we're just going to continue to face it and work hard. That's all you can do. James, Doug just brought it up, you know, Saul talks about you as a really solid shooter. Mm -hmm. After a night like this where you were a little off, you were able to get some points at the free throw line. Yeah. How do you have a clean slate for the next game and just try and start fresh? <clears throat> I mean, I don't even think about it. I just I just go to the next game. Every single game we're, we're starting off 0-0. That's the way I look at it. Are you, either of you guys angry or jealous at the way Toledo plays offensive basketball because on um, with the eyeballs, it looks like the way you guys think you should be playing offense. Uh, the extra pass, sharing the ball, setting up looks with the pass as opposed to the dribble. Yeah. I mean, you got to give credit where credit's due. They played really well tonight. Um, they moved it. Yeah, I mean, they, they looked like how we look when we play good. Um, I wouldn't say angry or jealous, yeah. just. Not angry or jealous, but. Just, you know. I don't know. Um, not really, just because they, they, they practice just like how we're supposed to practice. So they came out and they executed their plays the way they were supposed to. So you can't really have a problem with that. They did what they were supposed to do. Yeah, I wouldn't say we're angry at them or it's my fault. No. I wouldn't say we're angry at them or jealous at the way. I, I'd say we're angry at the way that we guarded it. Absolutely. For sure. Every game you go through, you know, hot and cold spells, that's just the nature of the game. But you're down by six with like seven and a half minutes left in the first half. And then just go cold. I think you scored five minutes in those final six. So how do you prevent those just scoring droughts from happening? Is it, is it just the energy thing you mentioned, or is there something uh, Like I said before, get the ball in the paint, play through Doug. Get, we need to get, not even like, well, that could be a. I mean, I, th I think it's simple physics. When you're, when you're missing shots from longer range, get closer to the hoop. Absolutely. You need to get easier looks. Mm -hmm. You know, if that's getting the ball down to me or Kevin, that's cool. Uh, off the screen and cutters, that would be great. Um, getting downhill and then dishing out for a wide open three, that would be amazing, you know? So we just need to make better plays. That's all. We just move, move, the move the ball to our assisted turnovers was seven to eleven, minutes. and we had we didn't have a lot of assists in the first half. You guys both have been talking about how you need to have this extra edge going forward, and I know you, you want to put this one behind you, but you know 
you guys are Saul says all the time you guys are very prideful guys. So is there anything you can take from this fuel wise, motivation wise to, to avoid an outcome like this in the future? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You can I mean you can take this either one of two ways. You can either fold or, or learn from it and have it have it motivate you going forward. And I, if I know every one of our guys on our team, it's gonna it's gonna motivate us and fuel us to go forward. It's an absolute learning experience. Um, I knew coming into the season we're gonna have, we're obvious, obviously going to have some growing pains, but this shouldn't have, shouldn't have been a growing pain. But um, at the end of the day, yeah, like James said, we have to learn from every every mistake and every loss we have. So <clears throat> we just have to put on strap back on our shoes and go back to practice tomorrow. Figure out a way to get through this. That's what we're gonna do. Any else for the players? All right.